here I am outside of Aldi. I'm getting ready to go in and pick up some ingredients for meal kits that will use only shelf stable ingredients. So stay tuned. in the Daniel Dad car. I'm not in my mom van and it's already been kind of an odd day. I had a little bit of car trouble that thankfully, thanks to a good friend, coworker of my husband's who came and rescued me was an easy fix. So we are back on schedule. It is a cold, rainy, very blustery day today here in Oklahoma. The wind is gusting at about 50 miles an hour. They don't say it's where the wind comes sweeping down the plane for nothing. Days like today always make me think of that Winnie the Pooh song from Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, the idea behind this video is that I am putting together meal ideas that will only use shelf stable ingredients. So nothing from the refrigerator, nothing from the freezer, meals that I can make for my family in a pinch if we only have a heat source. I've actually done a couple of these videos already. I did one that utilized mostly ingredients that I picked up at Walmart and one with ingredients from Dollar Tree. So I will be sure to leave those linked in the description box below if you want to go check those out. I've been wanting to do one from Aldi for a while, so I'm finally getting around to that. I initially came up with the idea for this kind of video several months back, back in February earlier this year, whenever we had an historic cold snap along with several rounds of ice and snow, and a lot of people lost power, including us for a little while. While, but it just got me thinking, you know, what are some things that I can make that would use only shelf stable ingredients if we were ever put in this situation again? And several of you came up with great uses for these meal ideas as well, like being able to take them to a friend or a family and just being able to, you know, leave it on their porch and not have to worry about whether or not stuff is refrigerated. A lot of you had said you were putting them in your hurricane preparedness boxes. Um, some people said that they were sending them back with kids who were going to college or maybe kids who are just starting out in life and in an efficiency apartment and just need some really easy meal ideas ideas. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I can find in Aldi that fits the bill. Let's head in. I'll show you what I got and we'll make a few of these up. I spy a few Christmas items showing up here. Tis the season right around the corner. I'm wondering if I need to pick one of these up for Ollie. A heart to tail cat tunnel or crinkle sack. <laughs> Confession, you all, I still do not have my fall decorations out. <laughs> the hour is growing late. But these are cute. They have a few leftovers here. Look at these cute little pumpkins. Ugh, I am such a sucker, you guys. I'm totally going to get one of these throws because it's blanket season and my kids keep disappearing with my throws upstairs. I take them to their rooms and cuddle with them in their beds or while they're like watching stuff in the playroom. So I'm going to get this one. All right, I am leaving the Aldi seasonal aisle before I make any more <laughs> impulse purchases. Unfortunately, the first idea I had, I'm going to have to adjust it if I want to do it because for some reason I thought that Aldi carried a Velveeta dupe, like, like the Velveeta block. I don't use that very often, but there's a recipe that my mom used to make growing up that used that and Velveeta is shelf stable. But I think I could still do a version of that, maybe using some of their dupes of the Velveeta shells and cheese. So I don't know, we'll see. So here's a super easy idea for you guys. My Aldi carries these meal kits and unlike Hamburger Helper, these only require water. So instead of using fresh meat like it calls for, you could use like a can of chicken along with that. Um, you could use beans in this one. You could use chicken in this one. Also, my Aldi has pepperoni and pepperoni is as shelf stable depending on the kind that you get. So that's another meat option, but there's an option for you right there if your Aldi carries these. Do you guys remember that video I did a while back about meals in the microwave? Like if you only have a microwave and a refrigerator, I need to come back and do one of those again here because they have these like these packets and they have these, I know a name brand like in other stores, but they have a store brand of the already cooked stuff that you just pop it in the microwave. I mean, I think I've noticed those before. It's not something that I buy regularly, but those might come in handy in emergency situation. And I suppose you could eat these, they're fully cooked. So you could probably eat them without having to, to heat it up, right? Because it's fully cooked. I mean, you would, you know, ideally want to heat it to eat it. Well, it says cooks in 90 seconds. So is it fully cooked already and you're just reheating it or do you have to heat it to eat it? I don't know. You might check that. Might, might read the fine print on that. These Chef's Cupboard Hearty Super Chili Mix. These are kind of like, oh, what's the name brand? It's Bear, Bear Creek, I think. But this Aldi brand of that is not a bad jumping off point for creating a meal too because I think all it requires is water. Yeah, 
It just requires water and obviously there's some dehydrated vegetables and stuff in there, but you could add like another can of carrots or mixed vegetables to that. You could add like a can of chicken to that and kind of make like a really easy chicken noodle soup. Um, so that's, you know, an option too as well that they carry here if you wanted something super quick. Ooh, look, they have a cheddar broccoli one. I might have to pick that up, see what I can do with it. We'll see. And I know that pasta marinara is sort of, you know, like the generic, you know, staple emergency easy meal because you just cook the pasta and then you add some sauce that's already cooked. But if you wanted to add a little protein, you could throw in like some chopped up pepperonis because like I said, these unopened can be stored in the pantry until the best buy date at least. And this best buy date is six months away. So if you're rotating your stock, you would probably be okay. So what I am thinking here is like a corn and potato chowder type situation because basically these box potatoes are are like dehydrated potatoes with seasoning and so the instructions are just enough water to reconstitute them so they make sort of like a casserole style potato but if you follow the directions here they may call for milk oh it only calls for half a cup of milk I would just leave the milk and the butter out but I would use the two cups of water that it calls for on the back of this but add a can of chicken broth and evaporated milk and then add some corn and bacon bits and it should turn into like a soup type chowder sort of consistency. So there's an idea. For those of us watching prices, cheese has gone up. It was $1.69 at my Aldi. It's $1.85 today. So it's about a 10% hike. I visited two different Walmarts this weekend or this week for various reasons and they were both completely out of mixed vegetables. And I don't know why, but they were completely out of them. And like peas and carrots. And they had lots of other frozen vegetables, but just that specific kind. And then Oh yeah, green beans. They were out of green beans there too, but they've got all of that stuff here at Aldi. So, all is well. Unrelated, but zucchini is cheap this week, so I'm totally going to pick up some while I'm here because I love this. I can tell that I'm getting hungry because everything I walk by, I'm like, oh, that looks good. That sounds good. I could go for that. Next day's function. High class lunch. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It is lunch the next day, and I haven't even done my makeup or anything like that. This is a real life household where real life happens and there are more real life people home today because the children have a distance learning day. That's something that their district does once a month so that the teachers can have meetings and so that the kids stay in the habit of learning at home in case we ever have to go back to that. So I'm gonna whip up something for lunch here and I'm gonna use um, some of the ingredients that I bought for emergency meals at Aldi yesterday. I think what we're gonna do is a cheddar chicken and broccoli rice. And I'm going to use this little chef's covered cheddar broccoli soup mix. This is the Aldi brand of the Bear Creek brand. But to that, I am going to add a can of chicken breast, which I will drain the liquid out of this. And I'm also going to add two cups of white rice. So basically I'm going to cook it according to the package directions. And once it, once it comes to a boil, I'm gonna add the rice and the chicken. And I'm also gonna throw in a can of carrots and I'll go ahead and drain and rinse these as well. Now, the way that I store these as an entire meal if you didn't want to put like an entire bag of rice, um, you could get, first of all, a smaller bag of rice, like a little one pound bag of rice at Walmart or something like that. They don't carry that size at Aldi. They're all really big packages, but they also had at Aldi little boxes of long grain and wild rice. And each box has about one cup of rice in it. So if you wanted to store this as an entire meal kit, you could put the soup mix and the chicken and the carrots in there with two boxes of that long grain and wild rice. Cause I think that would be about two cups of rice, which is what I am going to use in this recipe. So let's get it going and see how it turns out. I followed the package directions and brought eight cups of water to a boil and then I whisked in the soup mix and I added my chicken and my carrots and two cups of rice. I brought that to a simmer and then I popped the lid on and I turned the heat down to low. I let that cook for about 15 minutes and then I left the lid on but I turned the heat completely off whenever the timer went off. So after about 10 minutes, I opened up the lid and I gave it a stir and this was ready to eat. Okay, here it is, and I cannot wait to dive into this. I am super hungry right now, 
And this made a lot. I mean, this bowl probably has two cups of that broccoli, chicken, and rice in there. And there's easily six or seven more large servings still in my pot. In fact, I'm going to freeze a few of them in individual portions because we're out of those in our freezer. And my husband and I like to have those for lunches. So that's sometimes what I do with leftovers is just freeze them in individual portions. So I will definitely be doing that with this, but I can't wait to sit down and try this because I'm hungry. So I'm just munching away on this broccoli cheddar chicken and rice that I made while I'm doing a little bit of editing work here on the computer and it's really good. <laughs> I really like it and I think it's gonna freeze well and make great little individual serving lunch leftovers. So I'm very pleased with how this turned out. Didn't need any extra seasonings. I mean, obviously that soup mix is plenty salty enough on its own, so I like it. To me, it tastes kind of like a broccoli cheddar soup but with rice and chicken added in. So it's kind of like that Panera broccoli cheddar soup, but it's bulked up a little bit with those other ingredients. In my previous videos where I've talked about this topic, I've shared with you how I store these meals. I put all of the ingredients into a Ziploc bag and then I put that bag into a little bin that I keep in the bottom of my pantry. I just keep a few of these meals on hand and I make sure that I make them from time to time so that I'm rotating my stock and then I can add new ones as I go. We are going to make my mom's tuna casserole. And this was something that was on the menu regularly in my house growing up because everybody really liked it. In fact, it was my little sister's favorite or one of her favorite meals that we ate. I don't make it very often anymore because it utilizes two ingredients that I just don't use very much. And that is a can of condensed cream soup and a little bit of Velveeta cheese. They did not have Velveeta or a Velveeta type option at my Aldi. I thought they did, maybe it's a seasonal thing, but I decided that I wanted to show you how my mom made this. And then you can decide if you wanna just buy this instead and throw in some of the other ingredients that I'm using, or maybe in your Aldi, they'll have something like this, or maybe you would wanna pick up these ingredients at a different store. Now, the kinds of meals that I'm sharing in these videos are meant to be meals to get us by in a pinch, right? So I initially had this idea because of losing power for a little while and only having a heat source. So again, these may not be the healthiest options and they may not be the most gourmet, amazing meals we've ever had, but they're meant to be just to, to get us through in a pinch. You know what I'm saying? I have some egg noodles here. This is a one pound package. I really only need about 12 ounces. You absolutely could make the whole pound of it. It just means that it's not gonna be quite as saucy if you use more noodles. I have two cans of just regular chunk light tuna, one can of cream of chicken soup, and at my Aldi, they just had the Campbell's. They didn't have the store brand, which is fine, because I prefer that. And then I have one small block of Velveeta. This is just the one pound block. I didn't get the two pound block because it doesn't require an entire block of Velveeta. And then her recipe calls for a little milk. So we're gonna try it with just some of this evaporated milk instead of using milk from the refrigerator, but you could use it from the refrigerator if you wanted, if you were making this like not in an emergency situation. I've got my water boiling on the stove for the noodles and I'm getting ready to start making the sauce, but I wanted to let you guys know that I'm not gonna put any extra like vegetables in this. I'm going to make it exactly the way my mom made it. You could throw in a can of peas or a can of peas and carrots or a can of mixed vegetables um, or just serve it alongside like some canned green beans or something like that if you were looking for like a non-perishable vegetable to serve it with. I'm just going to make it pretty close to how my mom made it and then you know you could dress it up with a few extra canned goods if you wanted to. Okay, full disclosure, I accidentally bought the tuna in oil and you really should just get the tuna in water. I thought I was grabbing the tuna in water, but I grabbed the tuna in oil. I drained as much of it off as I could. It's probably not gonna make that much of a difference in this recipe, but I still recommend just buying the regular tuna in water. All right, I have my noodles boiling on the stove. I'm gonna cook them to al dente. And while those are on the stove, I'm just going to basically combine all of the other ingredients. The tuna, the cream of chicken, one can's worth of milk, and this is condensed, so I'm probably just gonna do about that much, about two thirds of the can full of this condensed milk, and then I'll add a little bit of water. And my Velveeta, which I cut into little chunks, and I'm gonna put that in here as well and stir it. I almost forgot, a little bit of cracked black pepper. My mom always put pepper in this. And you wanna make sure that you are stirring this as it is combining or as the cheese is melting because there's a lot of dairy in this so it will scald if you aren't careful. So you kind of want to stir it as the pot is heating up and then as it heats the Velveeta melts and your sauce will be made. You can thin it out a little bit with more milk or water if you want. Um, you can add extra tuna. You can just use one can of tuna. You can add some vegetables like I stated before but that's basically it for the sauce. 
Okay, so now you see my sauce is all creamy here. And like I said, keep it on a medium low heat and stir it as the cheese is melting because otherwise it will scald very easily. And I'm just going to go ahead and pour my cooked noodles back into the pot, give it a stir, and that's it. My mom would actually take this a, one step further and put it into a casserole dish. That way she could make it ahead and then reheat it later on. But that's basically it. I mean, this is a one pot meal that you can eat just like it is. And actually the way that I made it, I could have gone ahead and cooked the rest of the noodles because this is pretty saucy. This is a little saucier than my mom's usually turns out. So I might go ahead and just cook the rest of those noodles really quick and toss them in here as well. But that's it, easy peasy. Okay, that's more like it. I cooked the rest of the noodles really quickly and threw them in here, it's still piping hot. And now that's more the consistency of mom's cheesy tuna casserole. It smells good. All right, you guys, that's what I have for you today. I hope that that is helpful in some way and gives some ideas. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be sure to check in again with another video very soon. Bye.